It's been almost two weeks since the tragedy in Uvalde, and so many questions remain. Last week, Governor Abbott ordered the House and Senate to convene special committees to study school and firearm safety. But no one on the Senate committee is from a region where the latest mass shootings have happened. Texas Senator Roland Gutierrez weighs in. Also, why did the governor order those special committees instead of convening a special session? We'll ask State Representative Matt Shaheen if one is needed. Plus, will the Department of Justice review be enough to get to the bottom of what happened? Congressman Joaquin Castro is with us. And on the roundtable, a look ahead at next week's Republican State Convention in Houston. What are the party's grassroots saying now? Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. Good Sunday morning, everybody. I'm Teresa Wooder. Jason is off this week. Let's begin, as always, with some top political headlines from across Texas. In the wake of Uvalde, Governor Abbott renewed his focus on hardening Texas schools. He ordered the TEA to require schools to check door locks weekly. He wants the agency to encourage districts to increase school marshals and law enforcement presence on campuses. He also ordered the Texas School Safety Center to perform random in-person checks at schools. But Abbott's opponent, Democrat Beto O'Rourke, says the state should also focus on gun laws. O'Rourke says there is common ground to pass universal background checks, safe storage laws, and red flag laws in Texas. He said he personally supports a ban on the sale of assault rifles, but he knows that would not pass in Austin. The U.S. Conference of Mayors reissued a letter from August of 2019 calling on the U.S. Senate to address gun violence. That letter was sent by a bipartisan group of 255 mayors, including the mayors of Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and San Antonio. They are pushing for the passage of two bills that would enhance background checks. Now, these bills passed the House more than a year ago. They are now pending in the Senate. Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube can continue to censure users on their platforms. In a 5-4 to four vote, the U.S. Supreme Court blocked a Texas law that prohibits large social media companies from banning or removing posts just because of a user's political viewpoints. This ruling means this law is back on hold as a legal challenge to it moves through federal courts. Governor Abbott called for the formation of special committees in the Texas House and Senate to address the tragedy in Uvalde. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick quickly assembled his Senate committee, but it does not include senators from El Paso, Santa Fe, or Uvalde, where recent mass shootings have happened. State Senator Roland Gutierrez is a Democrat who represents Uvalde. He's been in the city since shortly after the shooting, and he joined us from the local community college. Senator, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Are special legislative committees enough? No, they're clearly not enough. I mean, we saw this uh, same show when we went through El Paso and Santa Fe and Sutherland Springs. They were just called something by another name. It was round tables. Uh, and then we had a recommendations from another type of legislative meeting, if you will. Um, you can call it special, but if it doesn't say special session and at 30 days on a date certain, then we have a real problem. Have you heard from the governor or the lieutenant governor to get any of your input? I know you're not on the Senate committee. Yeah, no, listen, I don't, uh, I'm not on the Senate committee. I think it's a slap in the face to the people of Uvalde. It's a slap in the face to the people of the Santa Fe community because their senator's not on the committee either, uh, nor is the senator from El Paso. Those are the last three school mass shootings in Texas. Um, it's, it's, it's disturbing to me that you're not talking to the people that are most clearly affected. This Latino community deserves better. Some Republicans had said initially that they were on board with a special session. Now they've sort of slowed that down and said, yes, let's go this committee route. Let's get some data. Let's, let's have a hearing and let's wait until a comprehensive investigation is complete before we take action. Do you think we need to have a comprehensive investigation complete before you act? No, look, we've been there, done that before. I have Republican constituents calling me to raise the age limit from 18 to 21. 80% of Republican voters say raise the image, the age limit from 18 to 21. You have to be 21 to buy a nine millimeter, but somehow you can be 18 in Texas and buy your AR-15. It makes zero sense. It is 
the very least Greg Abbott could do. Call us back to a special session and change that. You are joining us from Uvalde. I think a lot of people in Texas look at Uvalde as sort of a traditional town where there's a real back the blue mentality. What is the relationship like right now, the feeling like right now in that town regarding law enforcement in light of what we've learned about the police response to this shooting? Well, people are very upset about what's going on over here in Uvalde. I mean, they're certainly very upset about the answers or lack of answers that they have received. Uh, oftentimes we had at one point, we were talking about a teacher that propped open a door. It turns out that that wasn't the case. Uh, we've heard a lot of finger pointing to the local school board police chief. Certainly he made uh, some mistakes. I think that everybody on the ground made mistakes. And Colonel McGraw has said that publicly. This is a law enforcement failure here. Um, you know, that's not going to do us a lot of good now, but certainly into the future, we have to learn from the mistakes that were made here. Look at the system failures that were that were made here. Rural Texas has a problem with radios. Rural Texas has a problem with 911 operability. Uh, you know, those are the things that we need to talk about. We also need to look at a governor's policy that has created this madness called Operation Lone Star and has put hundreds and hundreds of police officers in a community. And in all of that, we had this failure. It's my hope that the real accountability, which I firmly believe and keep saying, that lies with the governor's office. It's my hope, it's my hope that he changes a couple of issues that need to be changed. And it's not just about mental health, and it's not just about video games, and it's not just about a one door in a school policy like Ted Cruz would have us think. It's about having militarized weapons in the access of 18 year olds. Senator Gutierrez, thank you for your time. Our hearts are still with the people of Uvalde. Thank you so much. The governor is focusing on hardening Texas schools, telling the Texas School Safety Center to conduct in-person, unannounced, random intruder audits to see how quickly strangers can enter a school building without being stopped. Some education advocates have condemned that idea. Let's go to Ian Mitra, the senior managing editor at the Texas Tribune. Good morning, Ian. Good morning. So unannounced fake intruders kind of sounds a little dangerous. What are you hearing about this? And that's the concern that, uh, that education advocates are raising and some others in terms of this policy. I mean, look, the governor is trying to in, in, increase the level of emer emergency operations planning, the operations uh, at all schools. And so part of this is looking at audit, uh, audits of how uh, schools can react in certain situations, but when these audits are unannounced in these types of situations, considering the alerts that we have and what's happened, you know, the ed education advocates are really concerned that, you know, something unintended could happen with these unannounced audits. And so this is going to be a continuing discussion as far as like, as far as the broader debate about what schools need to do with their, with security and what they're able to do with their security. Yeah, we definitely have to hear a lot more plans about how that's going to work. Texas Senator John Cornyn, hand chosen yeah. to lead a bipartisan effort to try to talk about gun legislation in Congress. Is there any momentum to actually see something happen? You know, it's interesting. You know, the senator himself said that uh, if nothing comes out of this, it would be embarrassing. Those are his words. And so he seems motivated to really try to get enact some kind of change. Now, no one is expecting radical change, big change here in, in terms of gun laws. And but I do think that there's, you know, there's Cornyn is working with Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut. They are really trying to figure out ways that they're on the same page. You know, they're both optimistic that there'll be something related potentially to how back uh, to legislation on background checks and things of that nature. Uh, no, no one seems to have any high hopes of anything major coming out of this, but there is hope that something must be done because I think the lawmakers have really heard that, you know, that, that no change yeah. is, is, uh, is, is not going to be accepted. All right, we shall see, and we'll see you again in a few minutes, Ian. Coming up, is it time for a special session in Texas to talk about guns? Why or why not? State Rep Matt Shaheen is up next. And the DOJ looking into the police response in Uvalde, is that enough? We asked Congressman Joaquin Castro. Democrats have called for a special legislative session in Texas after Uvalde. A handful of Republicans initially did too. Only Governor Abbott can convene one, but he's focused on special legislative committees instead. 
Republican Representative Matt Shaheen is with us. Representative Shaheen's district covers West Plano. Representative Shaheen, thank you for making time for us this morning. Good morning to you. You bet. Good morning to you. Do we need a special session in Texas? We don't. Um, I think the governor is really doing a great job leading um, on this whole issue that we have with respect to Uvalde. What a horrible tragedy uh, that is. He's directed the legislature uh, to take a look at several items as far as uh, school safety, firearm safety, police training, and then two areas that I'm more focused on, mental health and uh, social media. With the governor ordering these special committees to be formed. How will this be any different than the task forces or roundtables that were held after El Paso and after Santa Fe? Well, so a couple of things. One is, um, as you, I'm, I'm sure you know, we're actually looking into exactly what happened in Uvalde. There's been some conflicting reports. So I think once, once we get that information, we'll be able to make some more um, relevant decisions as, as policymakers. And then, uh, you know, a lot of us are just getting to work uh, immediately. I've, I've had several discussions with the speaker's office, the governor's office. I've talked to my school board members. Um, I've talked to some of the social media companies about some ideas that I have. I've talked to some of the mental health uh, entities as well. So uh, make, no make no mistake, this is a very urgent matter. We're working on it. And this is going to be where we um, find the facts, come up with some proposals for legislation to keep our children safer, and we're going to take action. Are you comfortable with no action being taken until the 2023 legislative session, which is still what, seven months away? Well, we're again, we're taking action now. Uh, law enforcement is taking a look at what exactly happened um, during their uh, during their phase uh, of responding to the Valley uh, tragedy. Um, our schools are, are uh, re-looking at their emergency operation plans. That's something that we uh, mandated that the schools have these emergency operation plans. And so the governor's called for an audit of those as well. So look, there's a lot of activity, a lot of work that's being done right now. Nobody's waiting. You've talked about social media and mental health and school security. Are there any proposals regarding gun laws in Texas that you might be open to? I'll talk to anybody uh, about any idea, but the, the issues that I have is, I think there's a lot of discussion about banning certain types of weapons. We have to look at the facts. This shooter was, it was just horrific. He was in that classroom for 50 minutes at least. The firearm is really irrelevant. So look, I, I'll, I'll talk about uh, any types of proposals out there. I'm focused on things that I know are gonna be impactful. You know, after 9-11, it's not like we banned certain types of planes. We made our airport safer, we made our planes safer. Um, we looked at the individuals that were, were flying, we had no fly list. Those are the types of things that we need to listen to law enforcement, get their guidance on as far as making our schools safe. Uh, safe. We're gonna make our children as safe as possible. Representative Matt Shaheen, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. You bet. Good to be with you. The police response in Uvalde has been highly criticized and it's now being scrutinized by the federal government through a Department of Justice review. But should even more be done? Congressman Joaquin Castro is with us. Castro is a Democrat. His district includes San Antonio. Congressman Castro, good to see you this morning. Thank you for your time. Yeah, good to be with you. Is a Department of Justice review enough, in your opinion? Well, it, uh, the announcement by the Department of Justice that they're going to do an incident review, I think, is an important first step. And it's part of what I called for and the mayor of Uvalde has called for. But they have to give a full accounting of what happened and what went wrong, particularly with a law enforcement response, because there's got to be some accountability at the end of the day. Uh, I think everybody was shocked when they found out that law enforcement waited an hour or more to go into that classroom as the dispatchers were getting calls from kids who were in the classrooms about the dangers there. And so uh, it's got to be a review, but it's also got to be an assessment and analysis and finally uh, an accounting of what happened. Do you think the FBI needs to be involved in investigating? I do. And that was my initial request. You know, of course, the FBI is under the DOJ, but the FBI, I think, should be the lead investigator in this case, uh, not the state government, not the local government, obviously. And you see right now the state and local governments are fighting. Uh, and, you know, so I really feel like it should be the FBI that takes the lead on this. What about congressional hearings? You know, 
um, before we know it, school will be starting again. Uh, within 70 days or so, school will be back in session. So could could anything meaningfully meaningful come out of congressional hearings given that tight time frame? I do think there should be congressional hearings, whether it's in the House or the Senate or both, on, on the situation in Uvalde, because with all of the tragedy, uh, we have a lot to learn going forward. Um, yeah, of course, on gun reform and so forth, but also just on the situation and how law enforcement responded uh, and school safety as well. So there's a lot that the country can learn from what happened and should learn from what happened in Uvalde. On the legislative front, Democrats control the House and the Senate. Joe Biden is president. So why hasn't any meaningful gun legislation passed during this time? That's a great question. Uh, a few things. We still have the filibuster in place in the Senate, and we can't get 10 Republicans who agree to any kind of change on guns. You can get rid of the filibuster, which I've encouraged our Democratic senators to do, uh, or you've got to count on the goodwill uh, of folks like John Cornyn and others to actually come to the table and be willing to propose some compromise that's meaningful. What do you think has more of a chance of, of happening? Something meaningful from the federal level or something meaningful in Texas? Well, that's an important question because even though a lot of the focus has been on what is Congress gonna do, and there should be focus on that, but you can't let the state government off the hook. So the governor needs to call a special session in the next few days to take up this issue of gun reform. And that's how you'll know whether the governor is serious about this. If he calls a special session and actually entertains legislation on reform, you'll know he's serious. If he does it, he's not serious. Congressman Castro, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. Coming up, the GOP state convention next week. What will the party grassroots say about the tragedy in Uvalde? We'll ask the roundtable next. It is time now for Reporters Roundtable, where we put the headlines in perspective every week. Back with us is Ian Meacher from the Texas Tribune. Thank you for sticking around a little bit, Ian. Sure. Always joining us is Bud Kennedy from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. It's good to see you, Bud. Good morning. Hi, Teresa. And Bernadine Steptoe, our political producer here at WFAA in Dallas. Always good to see you, Bernadine. <laughs> So it does not look like Governor Abbott is going to call a special session. He's instead opted for these special legislative committees. Um, and he's really doubling down on the hardening schools issue. So, Ian, what do you believe the message is that Governor Abbott is trying to send? Uh, the, the message seems to be that he wants to have the discussion be about things other than gun laws because of, uh, of where he's putting the focus here. And so he's appointed these committees with some specific uh, areas to cover, whether it's school safety, issues of mental health, possibly some police, police training issues too. But I think he's really, you know, you can see it reflecting a very difficult uh, political balance for him because of, you know, his party really uh, being very uh, staunchly opposed to major changes in gun laws. Yeah, you did not hear him talk about changes to gun laws. You did hear his opponent, Beto O'Rourke, talk about that this week. Uh, Bud, what do you think the governor is saying and what do you think he should say? Yeah, Teresa, I think that's why you won't see a special session because the governor doesn't want to give Beto O'Rourke a chance to stand on the Capitol step and talk for 30 days. It's a little tougher to stage press conferences around committee hearings than it is you know, when the legislature's in session. So I think they wanna to try to avoid uh, giving the Democrats a stage for 30 days of press conferences. Yeah, Bernadine, what do you think the governor is saying to Texans? That there will not be any kind of uh, meaningful gun laws or anything that will stop the, the laws that are here in, in Texas. He's telling everyone who wants to listen that he's not going to have a special session because, number one, we're too close to an election. And, and if you have 30 days and nothing happens, then that's worse than not having a special session. So he's, he's being very clear on what he's going to do. And that's not have a special session and not address any kind of meaningful gun, gun laws. You know, Bud, it's not that long until November. Uh, do we have short memories or long memories? Do you think, do you think you're going to see any impact in November from this tragedy in Uvalde? I, I think that in Texas, uh, you know, our, our memories tend to pass by November of things that happen before we go on vacation, uh, before we have our summer. Uh, next week, the Republican convention meets in Houston 
and we'll see what the Republican grassroots have to say. But uh, I don't think this will affect the election right now. Yeah, Ian, let's talk about that. State GOP convention in Houston. They're really having to do a delicate dance right now. What do we think the party grassroots are going to say about Uvalde? I think the message coming out of the of the convention will be similar to what we've been hearing uh, among most Republicans, which is, you know, this was a tragedy. It's, you know, it was the act of a of a gunman that, uh, you know, they that, uh, but but that that the, the discussion will not uh, go towards gun laws. I think they've, the the message will be clearly like the gun laws are not the issue here. It's 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 other issues. The issues that we're hearing about uh, from the governor and others, and I think that'll continue to be the message uh, at the convention. Yeah, but even though polls show so many Texans seem to be in favor of at least something like a universal background check, maybe even raising the age to purchase an assault rifle, do you think that the state GOP will even consider that? Well, remember, these are the diehards, the Republicans who uh, want to drive policy so badly that they become delegates and go to the convention. Uh, they strongly oppose red flag laws because they feel like they take away guns without uh, due process. Uh, they oppose having any sort of, uh, of registration of sales because they feel like it creates a list of who yeah. hasn't gotten. Uh, they're just not interested in any of these changes. Right. Bernadine, real quickly, what will we hear from the state GOP in Houston? What you're hearing from their representatives, yeah. and that's that, that guns did not cause this right. tragedy, although it is. You're going to hear exactly what you're hearing from their elected officials. It Thank you guys for your opinion. Bernadine, Bud, Ian, we appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Have a great week, everybody.